thank you so much for joining. I appreciate you uh, listening to us on this first 2019 webinar. We intend to have many more. We, we want to keep you educated and well uh, advised of how to use the features you have or how to leverage features you're not using well. And that's really the intent of these webinars. I'm going to go through the agenda and some housekeeping quickly. Uh, Linda and Janine are going to speak to some of these uh, features that we're wanting to share with you today. Uh, Stuart's going to run through the screens to show them to you. We'll do Q&A at the end of each section. We'll record and deliver this to you afterwards, and then certainly have any, any follow-up. Really excited to be here. Stuart? Uh, go ahead and go to the next slide, please. So this is the, the team that supports you. Uh, you've met many of us at users conferences or in your office at, uh, uh, for training and implementation sessions or ad hoc Zoom meetings or conference calls. Um, please reach out to any of us at any time uh, on any questions on how to maximize the use of the application. If you're not sure who to reach out to, then use the email at the bottom, customer success at softvision.com. Next. Um, in the Zoom webinar user interface, you should see a Q and A uh, question and answer uh, uh, option. Please use it to ask us questions. Um, our experience is when I have 50 people connected, your, your background noise and uh, so forth can be so excessive that we really do need to keep you muted. Um, it's not a, a lack of desire to interact. It's just uh, overall efficiency and quality that makes us have to do that. So please, we're going to step through the, the topics. We're, we're going to demonstrate the topics and, and please do type questions. Uh, we'll make every effort to address those questions during this session. And if we are unable to, for whatever reason, we'll certainly follow up with you individually uh, after, the, after the webinar. Stuart? So I'm kicking it off now to Linda, who's going to describe a couple of these enhancements and take it from there. Hey, everyone. So with 1807 and 1901, we have updated the look of our icons and we've created ribbons within the dashboard. Um, this has allowed us to ensure all icons have a consistent look across all modules. We've heard in the past that that sometimes has been a challenge. Um, it also ensures all icons fit on one screen and users no, have, no longer have to expand or scroll to the right to see all their icons or go looking for a little tick mark drop down um, to find additional icons. Um, we've set the new ribbons up. Similar to how Microsoft Office applications work, in the, and everyone is so familiar with those. So you'll have a basic set of core ribbons that will be visible on each screen. Um, and then some screens may have an additional ribbon added to it because there's functionality that's unique to that particular screen. Um, our maps planning screen is a good example of that. Um, Users are also going to have the ability to add or remove icons to a quick access toolbar that will appear at the top of the screen, also similar to um, how the Office applications work. So your typical screens are going to have four basic ribbons that you'll see across almost every screen. The home ribbon is going to have information such as retrieve, save, exit, that type. Um, Editing will be used when users are editing or changing data related to the screen. It's also a great jumping off point to the other screens or modules that that um, screen may be using. View is going to be used when you're customizing your screen layout or your personal view. Um, and help will have access to our online help modules um, or our online help manuals. So maps is a good example of a screen where we're going to have a unique ribbon. So the maps product planning screen where we go in and we add products to offers. Um, we can, you know, using that comparable offer, we can do some forecasting when we add it. That will have its own product ribbon. So just a few screens will have these, but you'll see that throughout the module. 
Another change that we have, or excuse me, <laughs> our quick access toolbar, I almost forgot one. Um, our quick access toolbar is something that every user will be able to make unique to their screen. So you can hover over an icon, you can do a right mouse click, it will open up and say add to the quick access toolbar, um, and you will have it up there um, visible. I suspect most users are going to add things like save, save and publish, retrieve, some of your most common icons that you're going to use across that particular screen. Um, if you've upgraded or when you upgrade, take, take some time to experiment with this. It is a real productivity savings for yourself um, and how you use that screen. Another feature that we've added with 1901 is our SKU price change within product level forecasting. So in the past, users would have to go into the maps module, highlight and identify the offers that they want to change, make the price change updates, or they could also go and do this within the product wizard. But now this is, can be done on one quick, easy step in within PLF. It's a great time saver if you're using books like sale books, clearance books, any end of lifetime books where pricing may change quite often or changes at the very last minute. So it's easy. You basically identify your product codes, enter a markdown percent, and hit save. So we're going to show this one a little bit on the product level forecasting screen. So Stuart, if you could flip. Thank you. So within PLF, what you'll do is identify the offers you want to make your changes to. You'll do this by highlighting screens. Right mouse click to select adjust unit price. It'll open up that screen. You can enter a markdown percent and click save. Um, and then the screen will basically update your price, um, pricing for you. Talk about time savings, you've basically updated pricing across three offers in basically one screen change. So um, the next screen just basically shows those three offers. That we have. You can see we've reduced the price from $19.99 to $7.49 with just a 25% markdown. And then you'll see how that updates. That is specific to how you have your parameters set for updating units or revenue and recalculating that information. So um, with this, I'm going to turn it over to Janine to talk about um, dynamic reports and pivot tables. Thanks, Linda. Hi, everyone. So wanted to show you some great enhancements that we brought into DRS, which is our dynamic reporting system. We have introduced pivot and graph capabilities. So those of you that are used to our standard grid reports out of DRS, uh, most often the reports are exported into Excel and then manipulated in with pivot. So we now have given you the opportunity to do that right in the module itself. So it's all geared towards getting you answers quickly and being a bit more efficient. In addition, we've added actionable functionality to DRS. And so what this does is it gives you that extra step to do further analysis that perhaps maybe your hot list filters didn't necessarily provide. So you get to launch directly from the report into a screen. You can launch into product level forecasting, materials planning, or even venture to do whatever ever, ever further analysis you might have and take further action. This is something that's been available in our standard reports, but now we're also adding this to the pivot. We're also giving you different graph functions. So if you are tend to be more visual and want to make pretty reports, you now can do that as well. We have a new offer aggregate view that gives you the ability to look across sources at a higher level. <clears throat> so the benefit to this is more often than not, when you're trying to look at a series of offers and their overall performance, you're having to manipulate the offer product report or offer product SKU report in Excel. So we're now giving you this view to do it right in the system. And you can look this year versus last year. You can take a look at your seasons. You can even look at fiscal bus buckets. The report's available, but you do have to be able to pull it into your main DRS menu. So if you need help with that, be sure to ask Linda Stewart, Jeff, or myself, and we'll show you how to do that. The other benefit that we've done with DRS is we've actually increased the record limit that you can retrieve. So this 
will allow you to bring in larger views of data, hopefully a little less filtering, and you can control this by a parameter. And the param there's also an additional parameter that will give you increases to those warnings that indicate where you have to do additional filtering. Next. Thank you. All right, here is a view of what the pivot report looks like in DRS. The benefit to this is now those of us who like to look at our data in columns, you now can do that, whereas our standard grid report shows everything in rows. The <clears throat> grid, the pivot grid area that Stuart is, is highlighted in, you have the option to enlarge that area by hiding your, your pivot filters. The um, Sorry, I lost my connection there real quick. Apologize for that. <laughs> the, um, the other benefit with the pivot report versus grid report, if you have a preference with the pivot view for all your reports or a specific report, whenever you exit out of the report and launch back into it, it'll retain that view that you specified or that you prefer. And there are various display options. Here's a quick sample of what one of the bar graph looks like. And Stuart will show you some additional ones that we have. There's a, there's a selection for you. Next. Uh, this is the new offer aggregate view. So this example here, um, up at the top, the base view, this would be the view that you would need to pull into your main DRS menu. In this example, I've just pulled my company ID information. And so I can go ahead and pull from source type. So if you've got multiple offers, if you are a company that does offers and ventures, uh, that'll be available, or if you use promos as well. And then for here, I can go ahead and group by month or by quarter to get that aggregate view that I need. All right, and this is just, these are those two parameters I mentioned that increase that record limit. That's all I have, and I'm gonna pass it on to Stuart, and he's gonna go through the live screens with you. Thanks, Janine. <clears throat> I'm connecting to a sample dashboard. Here is the map screen, so I'm in the maps planning screen for an offer, and you could see here the ribbon and the different tabs, the home edit view and product. When you're at the product level, this product will default. So this product tab will come up. And this is where you could search for products. You could change your adjust by if you have different metrics when you add to comparables or your percent change. You also have these product options to add to the offer through comparable products or placeholders or new products. And then here's where you could customize the product grid layout. So that's the product tab. The edit are things that you would use when you're at the top level, when you're doing budgeting. You would add your comparables. You could create your budget or edit your budget. You can add presentations. And then there's other screens here that you would link to, like mix percent and PLF. You know, note that you could still right click when you're in the product grid to access these as well. The view menu is where you would go to customize your budget grid layout. You could also change other options, how you view the planning tree, whether you're in seasonal mode, auto fit, and some of the others, and then level. This is where you would go in and change levels to either see it at a, uh, product level at the lowest level or a subcat or at the uh, at a top level the help is where you could access online help and home is where you would have the save icon and print and excel now this quick access toolbar is up on top and you could see this shows you we have things like save and exit that will remain up there regardless of the you know, ribbon or tab that you're in. If you wanted to add product forecast, so if you're usually linking to product forecast, you could right click and add to the quick access toolbar 
or mix percent, you could add that. And so you now have this set up here, mix percent and product level forecast. This is user specific, so each user would have to customize it the way they wanted to do it. And the system will remember when you come in and out of the module, what your settings are on this icon. You can right click to remove it, and you also have the option to show it below the ribbon if you wanted to. So if you like it better here, you could show it there as well. So that's Maps Toolbar. I'm going to go to PLF, I mean Maps Ribbon. I'm going to go to the PLF Ribbon. The Edit is the default that opens up when you come to PLF. So that has a lot of the functions that you could be doing, setting offer criteria, your search and product selection here, and then these other screens. And this is formatted and actually shows up a lot better than we used to because when we had the toolbar, we had so many other icons that it sometimes didn't fit. You'd have to go to the right and click a down arrow. And so as we started adding these, it got very crowded. So this is good that you're able to link to these others here. So most everything you need would be on this edit. View would be where you would customize the view. And then home is where you have save, save and publish, or print. And also on this quick access, you have this save and save published as I go in here to make these changes. But pretty much you're gonna be staying in this edit ribbon as much as possible. So that's the ribbon in Maps and PLF. If you have any questions, put it in the Q&A and then we'll, we'll answer them. Hi all, this is Megan. Um, as Stuart just mentioned here, uh, please enter your questions in the Q&A window and we'll address them. Right now we don't have um, any at the moment, so if anyone has a question, feel free to enter it in and we'll address it. All right, then I'm gonna go on to, since I'm in PLF, I'm gonna go on to the uh, markdown and the SKU price adjust. So this particular product is a Thermaline jacket. It happens to have different prices depending on the size. There are tall sizes here with different prices. And so you might have that as well, or you might have wide widths. So this gives you the ability to do that markdown and the system will automatically calculate that price. So it is a big time saver. I could either select a particular offer or I could hold down control or shift and select multiple offers as long as I do that. And then right click to adjust unit price. So this will show you the offers that are selected that are gonna be affected by this change and the number of SKUs. So if I enter a markdown percent, and remember to always enter it as a decimal, so I'm gonna hit point 20, and this will save. You don't have to do an additional save, uh, like changing the forecast. This will update that. So let's wait while the screen is refreshing. So now you see these products. Here's your weighted markdown percent. Here is the weighted price. And again, that depends on your forecast for the different prices. That's 48.93. You could see the weighted list price. So you see the difference between the two of these. You could also see your revenue, your forecast revenue now at the markdown price compared to your revenue at list price. And you could see your gross margin and your variance in gross margin. So if you do use this feature, it would be good to customize columns to be able to see all of these. Which, and, and that was easy for us to just do this markdown. If I right click and go to display SKUs, you'll also see this markdown and this unit price. And you can see how we have different prices depending on the sizes. Before we had this enhancement, you'd have to go in and manually update these unit price either here or possibly in the wizard, but it would take a long time. What's nice here with this feature 
is that you could see the results right away. If you see that your revenue is possibly too low in that, you could go in and make that adjustment. And uh, as Linda mentioned, there is a parameter that says, and it's called price change update field. So we have it set in the sample dashboard for units. So as we reduce the price, it's going to re change the units basically and keep the revenue the same. So your units would probably increase at that point. That's a business decision uh, that you would make. Um, if for some reason you said, well, that's too much of a markdown, you could go in and adjust the unit price. You could even take off the markdown, just enter a zero and hit save. And then that'll just take off the markdown. And now we see the markdown percents at zero. So this is quick and easy. You could do it for multiple offers. You could see the results right there on the screen. I think it's a great time-saving feature uh, that we have here. So if you have any questions on this, let me know, put it in the Q&A. Yeah, let me reinforce that. And I didn't reinforce it well at the beginning, but in the user interface, you might have to move your mouse to see it. There is a Q&A section. Um, and and you know we're all trying to get into the flow here and i get that and we'll demonstrate it better next time but if there are any specific questions you'd like us to cover them now great but certainly don't hesitate to follow up with questions later go ahead Stuart. megan any questions uh yeah we do have an anonymous question here asking okay. or is speaking which the answer is yes That's it. Okay, I, I didn't hear that, but <laughs> so no question. That, on this. that is indeed Stuart speaking. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's Stuart's job. I'm sorry. Yes, they were just confirming. <laughs> other than that, um, you can continue. Nothing. Oh, else. you all should recognize my gravelly voice. <laughs> anyway, all right, I'm going to go on to this dynamic report uh, and show the pivot. So you could create now a pivot report for any type of report that you have in DRS. In this case, this is a forecast offer product report. So here I'm looking at particular products in an offer. I'm looking at the forecast, the units and revenue. And there's a lot of fields in this report. So you could see here how I limited the fields that I was going to see here. Uh, again, you don't have to, but it usually helps to do that. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of users take this information put it into Excel and put it into a pivot table because our information is in rows here within the application. A lot of times you wanted to see it in, in columns. So if I click up here to pivot report, I could see here the different fields that I could use. And if you're used to working with pivot tables in Excel, this should look familiar. So here I want to look at the offer product. So I'm gonna drag offer product as a row field. I could add description as a row field. My offer ID I want as a column. Oh, I did that again. Okay. My offer ID is a column. And then if I wanna see revenue, I could drag data items here. So this is nice. So now I have something that I would normally have to go to uh, Excel about in the pivot. I can see the offers up here in the columns. I could see the revenue that's here and I could see the grand total. So you could also sort in here. There's also a little filter icon where you could filter out what you want. Uh, as Janine mentioned, you could right click and then link to PLF for materials planning. And you could see here that there's these different fields. Up on top, we have a legend that shows you the, the format of the field. So you could see the blue of the character one. So you wouldn't use that as a data item, but you would use number or Boolean, which would be true false. So this just tells you the type of information. You can hide those pivot filters. Like I said, if, if you had every field in here, this would be filled up really a lot. So you may want to customize that. 
I can go now to a pivot chart, and now I can see the chart. I can see the offer ID. I mean, the offer ID is here, and the description, and those sales. There's different chart types depending on the type of report, either bar, or area, or line. You could switch the axis. So now I have the offer ID on the bottom and switch that back and forth. You could save the chart as a PNG or JPEG if you wanted to do that. And then go back to the pivot grid. If you want to see the grid report, then you select this up here. And then you would see the grid report or the pivot report. Like Janine said, when you exit this, it would come back to the screen wherever you set this up. Um, there's also the ability, if you know uh, in Excel, if you right click, you could show this field list. So this also is similar to the way they have it in Excel. You could drag from here and you could see up here, it's showing some of these other fields that we didn't select. But you could then add it to this report. And uh, it's a nice feature here. So for those that are used to going to Excel, you could create a nice report here in DRS. Going to go to this aggregate forecast. This is the base view, it's MVDRS source aggregation. And here you could see the different source types, offer, venture, promo, the source ID, the month and quarter year, and the week begin date and end date. You'd see forecast units and revenue, number of products, macro information, and then the actual revenue. So here you could do it for a particular time period. You could do this year, last year. Here I did it just for quarter one. So I could go down and see the results for January, February, and March. And again, this month and quarter is related to how you have this set up in the fiscal calendar. Um, so this is a, a nice report. I want to take a look at some of the other fields, but this is a top level report. It is good to be able to see for a particular time period uh, what the results are. So that's it with DRS. If Short, we have two questions question. that came in. Yep. Um, the first one from Holly L. Can you print the pivot or graph? You can, actually, you could print this pivot grid. You could either print it or you could export it to Excel. It's not going to export as a pivot. It's going to look just like this. So you could print or export to Excel. In the pivot chart, I think... Uh, you save it as a PNG, right, Stuart? To, yeah, I think you have to do this save chart as a PNG or a JPEG. I don't know if we actually did an export in here, how that would work. And I'm not going to try it. We'll, we'll try it. Okay. After, but I think the best thing is to go at least for the chart, to save the chart, and then the grid itself, you could print this pivot grid or put it into Excel. Okay, great. And the next question, can you export pivot into Excel and keep that format? Yes, yes. And uh, I'm going to show you something because we don't have um, we don't have Excel set up in there. So I actually saved this to my desktop because I thought someone might ask about it, but now I have to look for it. But I did save that. Uh, That's okay, Stuart. Go back to the deck. Um, That's we, all right. I'll bring it up here. Here is a test pivot. I'm sorry, Jeff. Here's a test pivot. So this is exactly how that would look. Perfect. Okay. Just understand it's not now in an Excel pivot table, but it is in the appear the, the grids and rows came over. Excellent. Right. Look exactly like that. So appreciate the questions. Thank you. So so again, everyone, our intent here is to disseminate information that we find working with others or that we feel is 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 you know, helps you in your job, helps you be more efficient, more more knowledgeable, get to knowledge more quickly, get to uh, changes more quickly and efficiently. And um, 
we intend to do more of these webinars uh, this year. We, we were told by you at the user conference that this is interesting. Uh, note that March 13th is going to be the next one. And we're going to review uh, the new release key enhancements and some other tidbits as they become uh, uh, apparent to us that, that the user community needs this, this guidance. Um, so uh, absent any other questions, we, we thank you. We want to respect your time. We're going to move along. But if you have any questions, reach out to us individually or reach out to the group. And uh, we'll send you a, a summary email of the questions and answers and a link to the recording for review later and an invitation to the next one real soon. Thank you, everyone.